So if you can read my shirt, this is an issue. What does it say? Fun fact. I don't care. This is an issue. Why? Because many people don't care if they're going to go to heaven or not. Many people are very lenient on their perception of the reality of what it is to pass away without Jesus. Or even if, if they're in church and they're lukewarm, a lot of people have this attitude. They don't care. And they say they care, but by the way that they live, they deny Christ. And they don't live the crucified lifestyle. They don't walk in the Spirit. They're, they don't have a hunger to walk in the Spirit. They don't have a hunger to crucify their flesh. They don't have a hunger for the spiritual things of God. And they, they don't have a hunger for the spiritual things of God. What does that tell you? A, hungry, a, a person, let, let me put it this way. A person who has life has hungry for natural food. So the same concept applies to the spiritual man, to your inner man, which is your spirit. If your spirit is alive in Christ, then your spirit by then your spirit is going to crave spiritual food. If your spirit doesn't crave spiritual food, I'm not talking about like oh like oh from one week I, you know you you didn't feel anything. No, I'm saying like if you don't if you genuinely have this attitude of you don't care consistently if nothing in your in your mind or nothing in your in your being nothing in your spirit leads you to desire crave the move of god the word of god i'm not talking about emotionalism i'm talking about being with jesus you don't crave the spiritual things of god you don't crave prayer you don't feel drawn to prayer you don't feel drawn to fast you don't feel drawn to the things of god then i will be very concerned and this is not the attitude that we should have because if this is the attitude that we have then that can be a sign that the Holy Spirit might not dwell in you and that's not to scare you. and that's not to put you down but to give you a holy fear to let you know that you have to repent you have to get right with God right now you have to repent and you have to turn to God right away you have to be willing to surrender to the will of God you have to be willing to surrender it's not just saying a prayer it's an act of surrender it's a marriage between you and the Lord but he is the head he is the groom and we are the bride so and therefore we are in we are subject to him we are in submission to the Lord we we no longer do as we will but we do his will the word of God says we have free will and don't try to push me back with free will because a genuine believer has a burning desire to lay down their will to do the will of God. The flesh might not like it. I'm not saying your flesh is not going to give you pushback. What I'm saying is something inside of you just says, Lord, I want to lay down my will to do yours. That is the Holy Spirit prompting you to do so. If you don't feel the, the Holy Spirit prompting you to, to lay down your will to do his will, I'll be concerned. I'm not saying you have to go and start a ministry and you have to go preach in front of thousands of people. I'm not saying you have to be an automatic extrovert. Now, the Holy Spirit can make you bold and the Holy Spirit can give you the power to do so and, and the speech to do so and the words to do so like I am talking to you right now. But, not always. But, but sometimes God just wants us to remain quiet. But, not if we're quiet. Like it says in the book of Thessalonians, you know, we should live a quiet life, you know, living at peace with one another. That's what it says in the book of Thessalonians. But even if you're living a quiet lifestyle, you're also, you're, at the same time, you're living a crucified lifestyle. At the same time, you have a burning desire for the Lord Jesus. At the same time, you have a desire to, to get in prayer. You have a desire to talk to God. You have a desire to hear from God. You want to hear God's, God's voice. You want God to speak to you. You have this craving. You have this longing and this, this spiritual hunger for the voice of God, for the leading of God, for the direction of God. You want God to give you feedback, God. It might, if what I'm doing is it pleasing you, God, is the way that I'm living pleasing you? Is there anything in my life you want me to remove? Is there anything in my life that offends you, Lord? I'm subject to you, Lord. I will follow you till the end of my life. That type of thing is evidence that the Holy Spirit is living in you. If you don't feel that way at all, and if you have this attitude of you do not care, then be very concerned. Because if you want, to, if you were to pass away, God forbid. Or today's your last day on the earth. Where are you going? Because in the book of Romans it says that those that do not walk in the spirit and those that do not have the Holy Spirit do not belong to him at all. Even if you've been in church all your life, even if you've been serving in any team, you serve in any any Christian community, it doesn't matter. If you don't have the Holy Spirit living in you, if there's no fruit of the Spirit in your life, then you don't belong to God. I'm not 
telling this to discourage you, but to give you a holy fear and to tell you, hey, wake up and put on the batteries. Repent and get right with God right now. Don't worry about having a spiritual experience, an emotional experience in order for you to turn to God. The way that happened with me, I, re I repented first and I turned to God. The experience and the emotion the, and the emotional experience that God gave me solo, me and him. I didn't have to be in a church service to feel any, any sort of spiritual experience. He gave it to me on my own personal time. But the first step that I took was repenting from my sin and turning to, the, to God. Everything else came after. That's just the way it happened with me. Might be different with you. I don't know. But that's just the way that I've experienced the genuine hand of God over my life. My, the first thing I did was step out in obedience, which was repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and turn to Jesus. That was the first thing I did. It wasn't an emotional experience that led me to repent. It wasn't something supernatural that led me to repent. It was just obedience to God and me deciding to say, you know what? Enough of me. I just want you, Lord. I'm repenting from sin. I'm choosing to live for myself no more. And I'm choosing to give you everything. I'm choosing, Lord, take care of, of everything, Lord. I'm giving you the wheel, Lord. You you are the driver. You are the driver. You will be done and not mine. The first thing I did was submit myself to the obedience of the Lord and say in repentance and turning to God, everything else came after. Don't worry if you don't feel anything. Don't worry if the people at your church or around you that are in the Christian circles are just putting up a show and giving the Lord a bad look. Don't worry, the people around you are, are spiritually dead. If it's so dry in your church or it's so dead and there's no no longing for God, don't worry about that. It's, it's you and Him. It's you and Him. Worry about yourself first and once you get lit up on fire for the Lord, then you can go and light others up for the Lord. But if you have this attitude, be concerned and repent. Because if you have this attitude, that might be evidence that the Holy Spirit might not dwell in you. I don't know you personally. I'm not saying it, you, you always have to be smiling, but I have the joy of the Lord. I have this love for God. I have this love for Jesus. I have this longing to submit to the will of God. I have this longing to submit to Jesus. I have this love for Jesus. I have this burning and, and this overwhelming love for the Lord. I might not always be smiling. In fact, if you follow me on Facebook or you follow me on social media, my, the messages that the Lord gives me are not positive. In fact, they're very convicting. They're very strong and they're very to the point and they're sharp swords. They're very sharp swords. They're not these happy messages. Because the reality is that sometimes God cares more about us turning away from unrighteousness than living a, a luxurious lifestyle with this happiness. Because happiness and joy are not the same thing. Happiness is subjective to exterior situations. As in looking forward to buy something makes you happy. That's not joy. Joy is is inner there's inner joy and there's inner peace in your spirit that's why that's why when paul would write the letters the epistles he would say blessed as an inner joy and peace be with you from god the father which is a supernatural peace it's a supernatural joy doesn't always have to manifest in a smile doesn't always have to manifest in in looking happy and you know where you know everybody no guys that's not that doesn't necessarily mean that a person doesn't have joy a person that has joy means that they have they have an inner peace and an inner joy a mist of any situation this confidence and trust in God that is where my joy comes from my joy is found in the Lord and even then the reality is guys and I just made a video about it I actually just posted it watch it right here the video that I just made regarding the truth about Christianity that it's a tough road to walk on you're gonna feel like bro this cross is heavy it's really heavy you're gonna, there, there's gonna be times Maybe in the majority of the time where you might feel the burning of the cross, the heaviness of the cross. It's not about works, but you will feel pressure from the world. You will feel pressure to compromise. You will feel pressure to throw in the towel. You will feel pressure to give up and say, Lord, you know what? Thank you, but I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired, Father. And let me take a quick break. And that's very dangerous because once you begin to flirt with the world, it can lead to your spiritual death. Take this very seriously. You flirt with the world. You say, um, it's just a song. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a beer. It's just a drink. It's not going to do nothing to me. Oh, it's just a cigarette. Oh, it's just this and that. Careful. Give the devil an inch and he'll take a foot. 
devil's out to get you that is that my friend is a form of satanic tactics against the believer be wise don't have this attitude because when you have this attitude it can be fatal to your spiritual life or it just means that you're not spiritually alive even and be very concerned if you have this attitude is a very very big indicator that you should actually that you should actually care and if you care that means that you're concerned for your own spiritual well-being repent and get right with god if you're not right with god if you're walking in compromise repent and turn to him revelation 2 there's many good things that the people in the in those four churches did right church of ephesus smyrna pergamum and thyatira those four churches were doing things that were good in the sight of the Lord, but he had things against every church that they had not repented of. Repent from everything. Repent from all sin and turn to him. If there's anything in your life, ask the Lord, Lord, if there's anything in my life that offends you, prune it from me. Prune means to remove. Cut it off from me, my Lord. If there's any circles that I'm a part of that offend you, take me away from those circles. And sometimes those things are necessary, guys, because God wants to prune you. Either He prunes you or He throws you away. That's what it says in the Word of God. Either He cuts those things off or they infect you, you stop producing fruit, and you become useless to God and He throws you away into the fire. That's what the Word of God says. Live with the fear of God, guys. Don't have this attitude. This attitude might mean that you might not have the Holy Spirit. And forgive me if this sounds strong, but this is the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you the truth because I love you and I want you to repent. And I want you to turn to God. Let Him wash you. He'll handle most of it. He wants your obedience to, to begin with. And don't worry, you don't have a, an emotional experience so that you can give your life to Him. Sometimes what God wants first is your obedience and your trust in Him. The emotional experiences, they're not emotional experience. I'm sorry. Your body reacts out of emotion to spiritual experiences. Although that's not always the case. There are some, you know, fraudulent emotional experiences that is just in your mind. But your body does react emotionally to spiritual experiences don't get it twisted there are many experiences that people do feel that they react to emotionally because emotionalism is is, is human so because we're human we're not we're going to react to things with emotion and sometimes the spiritual things of god are so strong that we don't know how else to how how else to to receive them but with emotion some people cry some people laugh Laughter is not evil. Not all of it is evil. Discern when it is of God or when it is not of God. You know what I mean? Catching my drift. People react with emotion to spiritual experiences. Most of the time. I'm not saying all the time. Most of the time, guys. But if you're, I'm saying this if you're dependent on, a, on an emotional experience to turn to God. No. First, first things first. First, walk out in faith. First, act out in faith. Act out in obedience. Repent from your sin and turn to God. Everything else will follow after that. Trust me. It happened to me. I didn't I didn't give my life to God out of an emotional experience. I gave it to Him out of obedience and out of trust for God first. I didn't feel absolutely anything. The emotional experiences, my love for the Lord, then grew more profound and deeper as I kept walking with Him faithfully. Even if I didn't see any miracles, I didn't see any supernatural moves, give it time. But remain in the Lord. Remain with your trust and your faith in God. And all those things will follow after that. The supernatural things. If God wants to give you supernatural experiences. All that will follow acts of obedience. Trust me. <laughs> I can tell you from experience. And it's the, it's the best walk that you will ever have. Guys, but just step out of this, man. Step out of this. This is extremely dangerous. This will lead you to hell. This will lead you to the lake of fire. Hell is a place of torment it's a place of gloom the lake of fire is a ta is a is that's that's the end of it there's two places hell and then the lake of fire hell's temporary the lake of fire is eternal you can be there for billions of years and it'll be just like the first day when you got there really think about it read the gospels he spoke a lot more about hell than he did about love let that sink in Read the gospel for yourself. Don't just depend on whatever the guy in the pulpit is telling you because a lot of people in the pulpit cannot be trusted anymore to give you the truth. They'll give you a half truth. They'll give you what you want to hear because they don't want to scare you. They don't want to lose your money. They don't want to lose your time. That is a sad reality, guys. You got to snap out of it. Read the Bible for yourself. Read Mark, Luke, Matthew, and John. Start with John. I recommend you start it with John. And then read Mark, and then read Luke, and then read Matthew, whatever order you want to read it. But I recommend starting with John. Do not trust everything that the preacher in the pulpit is saying if it does not align with the word of God. 
it's it's a sad reality and it's a sad world that we live into where we have to come to that. That shouldn't be the case, but it sadly is. Be wise, use discernment. Don't fall for it. If the guy in the preacher says that you don't have to repent, that is a liar, and he will be held accountable to God severely if they don't repent and change their message. And the people that follow that kind of preaching, that kind of person, will have the same fate. So even if, if somebody that claims to be a man of God, somebody that claims to be in front of thousands of people is giving you a, a false gospel and a half truth, don't buy into it because you will suffer the consequences if you do. And the consequences are written in the word of God. Lake of fire, eternity in hell if you don't repent from sin. Repent of your sins and turn to God. It's that simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. You have the Holy Spirit in you, you decide to do so. You'll receive the Holy Spirit if you do so. And right away, the Holy Spirit will begin to convict you of sin. It's not going to come from you. You're going to feel this inner desire to let go of the things of the world. That's the Holy Spirit working in you. If you don't feel that at all, and you have this attitude when it comes to compromise, be careful, man, because that's not a good sign at all. That means the vultures are around you because you're a carcass. Tanda Rabbi. I hope you receive this and I hope you repent. I cannot emphasize it enough. Repent, repent, repent. Turn to God, turn to God, turn to God. It is that simple, guys. Not easy. But I pray in Jesus' mighty name that the seed fall on good soil and I pray that it touches you and I pray that it produces good fruit for the kingdom of God. Heavenly Father, I intercede for every single person that clicks on this video. Even if it's one person or a thousand people or I don't know how many people are going to watch this video on a replay, but I pray for every single one of them, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, that this seed fall on good soil and that it be planted in good soil and, butter, and watered by your precious Holy Spirit so that, it can produce, so that it can produce good fruit for your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Do me a favor, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Check out the videos, guys. There's a lot of good content on this video, guys, regarding the truth. Share this with a friend that needs to hear this. If your friend is lukewarm or has this attitude, share this video with them. They have to hear it. Their soul depends on it. If they pass away tonight, where are they going to go? Where are you going to go? Where is your family going to go? After you pass away, that's it. That's it. There's no second chances. There's no redos. There's no such thing. Jesus already paid the price. And if you decided to receive the gift, amen. If you decided not to, that's it, man. It's over. I don't know what to tell you. That's why this is serious. Jesus already paid for your sins on the cross. If you deny that gift of, of your sins being forgiven by Jesus, if you, did, if, you, if you reject to accept it, if you reject the gift, that's it for you, buddy. It's scary. Repent and turn to God. All right, guys. If you want to go ahead and sow into the ministry, you don't have to. But I would really appreciate it. I'm not going to leave the cash up in the zone on the comments if you decide to. You don't have to. But I would really appreciate it, guys. All right, guys. Have a good one. God bless you.